Born in 1863 into the family of a brewing tycoon and his mistress, Greville began her journey up the social ladder when she married Ronald Greville, the heir to a baronetcy title and a prominent figure in the Marlborough House set. The elite social circle of the 19th century centered around Albert Edward, then the Prince of Wales, later King Edward VII by 1901. Despite her husband's death from pneumonia in 1908, just 17 years into their marriage, Mrs. Greville, who remained unmarried, persisted in solidifying her reputation as a celebrated socialite and hostess, while also ingratiating herself with the royal family. She formed a particularly close friendship with Alice Keppel, King Edward VII's favoured mistress, who incidentally was also the great-grandmother of Camilla Parker Bowles. She also cultivated relationships with Queen Mary and held a special fondness for Mary's daughter-in-law, Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, the future wife of King George VI and later known as the Queen Mother. When the couple wed in 1923, Greville invited them to Polesden Lacey, her magnificent country estate in Surrey, for their honeymoon. Like Queen Mary, Greville had an impeccable taste and an insatiable passion for jewellery. She had a preference for Boucheron and Cartier and amassed precious gems during her travels around the world. While Mary favoured jewels from the Russian Empire, Greville seemed to lean towards French pieces. Reportedly, her jewel casket housed a necklace once owned by Marie Antoinette and another by Empress Josephine, Napoleon's first wife. As the Grevels never had children, her entire collection was passed on to Elizabeth. Today I'll share with you the most renowned pieces from her collection, starting with the remarkable tiara known as the Honeycomb. In 1901, Margaret Greville commissioned the esteemed jewellery house Boucheron to create a lavish tiara adorned with absinthe leaf motifs. The design was impeccably crafted, but after two decades, it fell out of fashion. In the 1920s, Margaret returned it to the jewellers, requesting a more contemporary design in line with the times. With no children or close relatives, Margaret Greville wished to preserve her jewellery collection. She left many items to close friends while the most extravagant pieces were bequeathed to Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. The honeycomb tiara underwent several alterations. The basic geometric design remained unchanged, but the adornments were made lighter. Marquise-shaped diamond finials were added. Upon her death, all the treasures were inherited by Queen Elizabeth II, yet she chose not to wear the Greville tiara, preferring more delicate pieces adorned with floral motifs. It was only decades later that it reappeared in public, adorning the head of the current Queen Camilla. Another exquisite piece from Greville's collection, now captivating Camilla, is the splendid Greville festoon necklace. Originally crafted by Cartier in 1929, the initial version of this masterpiece featured a double-stranded necklace, with the original festoon occupying much of the lower portion of the necklace seen today. However, Mrs. Greville, always seeking to elevate her jewels, returned to Cartier in 1938 to further enhance the piece. The jeweler added three additional rows of diamonds and reworked sections of the necklace's back chain. The resulting five-strand necklace was bequeathed to the Queen Mother, who occasionally adorned herself with all five rows at grand events. However, she often preferred to wear only the three-row segment for its more forgiving and wearable nature. While the entire necklace exudes grandeur, resembling a colossal diamond breastplate, the three-row segment offers a more versatile option. When the Queen Mother passed away in 2002, the necklace was inherited by Queen Elizabeth II, who never publicly wore it. Instead, it became one of the treasures she loaned to the current Queen Camilla. Among the treasures lovingly bestowed upon Queen Elizabeth by Margaret was a breathtaking necklace adorned with floral motifs. Crafted in 1907 by the skilled artisans of Boucheron, made from silver and embellished with Burmese rubies and diamonds, this necklace held a special place in Margaret's collection. Interestingly, Margaret often updated her jewels to keep them fashionable and contemporary. Yet the ruby necklace remained unchanged. That is, until a pivotal moment arrived. In 1947, the new owner of the jewellery became the then Princess Elizabeth II, who received it as a wedding gift. Unlike her mother, who seldom wore the necklace, Elizabeth II clearly cherished it, appearing in it on numerous public occasions. In the 1950s, she had the necklace shortened, aligning it with the fashion of the time by bringing it closer to the neck. 
This alteration remains to this day. However, if one were inclined to restore its original appearance, it could easily be achieved, as the two removed parts are still stored in the royal vaults. One could find numerous events and official photographs featuring Elizabeth II adorned in the ruby necklace. In 2017, at a banquet held in Buckingham Palace, the necklace graced the neck of Kate, the Duchess of Cambridge. Despite this, the necklace did not become the possession of Prince William's wife. In 2018, it once again adorned Elizabeth at a banquet honoring the heads of government of the Commonwealth countries. The most unforgettable adornment for me personally is undoubtedly the Greville Kokoschnik tiara, with its ethereal shimmer of exquisite diamonds and the enchanting gleam of velvety green emeralds. Behold, the true splendor of aristocracy. Commissioned for the esteemed matriarch of society, the Honorable Mrs. Ronald Greville, dubbed the Greville tiara, by Boucheron in 1919, it was crafted in the voguish Kokoschnik style, popularized at the Russian Imperial Court. Fashioned from diamonds and platinum pave, embellished with six emeralds on each side, the central emerald boasts a weight of 93.70 carats. The tiara remained relatively obscure until an image of it surfaced in the archives of Boucheron. While there are various accounts of her adorning herself with these magnificent emeralds, Lady Margaret Greville was depicted only once wearing the emerald tiara, accompanied by emerald necklaces and earrings, at a concert at the Austrian Embassy in London in 1937 during the festivities of King George VI's coronation. Following her demise, it also came into the possession of Elizabeth. Yet unlike the Greville diamond diadem, the emerald Kokoschnik tiara remained unseen in public until Princess Eugenie's wedding. In addition to the emerald tiara, the inheritance also included an emerald necklace, cherished among the favorites of the Queen Mother. Thanks to the meticulous research of Vincent Malin, we have learned that in 1911, Mrs. Greville entrusted some of her emeralds to the esteemed Parisian boutique Boucheron for a transformation. It is noted that two necklaces from her collection, one larger, the other smaller, were amalgamated into a singular piece by the skilled jeweler. However, this description seems not to align with the design of the necklace we see today, which appears seamless and boasts an original design, square-cut emeralds encircled by diamonds. While the necklace certainly exudes a 19th century or earlier aesthetic, verifiable information about its origins remains scarce. Similar to many other jewels from the Greville inheritance, Elizabeth began wearing the emerald and diamond necklace after the conclusion of World War II. She continued to grace herself with emeralds throughout her extensive reign as Queen Mother. One of the Queen Mother's final appearances in the Greville emerald necklace took place in December 1990, approximately 12 years prior to her passing. This occasion was the Dance of the Decades, a grand celebration hosted at Buckingham Palace by the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh in honour of royal family members commemorating milestone birthdays that year. Following the Queen Mother's passing, the necklace was passed down to Queen Elizabeth II, who, however, never displayed it publicly. One brooch from the esteemed Greville collection truly captivated Queen Elizabeth II. This platinum piece boasts a rather understated design, a diamond scroll interspersed with three pearls, one of which is drop-shaped. Crafted in 1929 by the renowned jewelry house Cartier, the brooch distinctly reflects the Art Deco era, evident in the horizontal rows of diamonds flanking the sides, seemingly providing support to the scroll. Margaret Greville held a profound fondness for pearls. According to her contemporary Maggie Pam Burbage, she could engage in lengthy discussions about them and took genuine delight when her jewelry garnered praise in the press. Queen Mother Elizabeth shared similar sentiments, often gracing public appearances with the Greville brooch in the post-war years. Interestingly, the design of the brooch allows for versatility as it can be worn with the pearl drop facing either up or down. However, in all the photographs where either Elizabeth is captured wearing it, the drop is consistently positioned upwards. Perhaps they had a personal preference for this orientation, or there may exist a tradition unknown to us. The future destiny of the Greville brooch is indeed intriguing, whether it will adorn Camilla or Kate, or perhaps be cherished by the young Charlotte, only time will reveal its path.